Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you the time lapse version of the Highland Cow that I've recently completed. Now I really did enjoy working on this portrait but there were a few things that I wanted to focus on after a couple of questions that I got on Patreon. So we all struggle with the colour mixing initially, we find that we put a lot of stress on ourselves to get that right. Now if you've seen many of my videos here on YouTube you'll know that I don't really put as much focus on the colour as I do the contrast. Now that being said, of course the colour is important and there are ways that I like to simplify the process in terms of colour selection and how to mix, but really as long as I pick a colour that is dark or a lighter value of that colour, that's really how I base my colour selection. I'm not sitting there thinking which shade of purple should I be using for the background here. As long as it's a dark purple it's going to be okay and, and do what I want it to do because I know then that the contrast is going to be good. Now the other way that I determine the colour that I want is whether or not it is a warm and a cool colour. Now all of this I really do go in depth with my Patreon versions because they're such significantly slower often real time footage and this Highland Cow I wanted to make this tutorial really focus in on that. The Highland Cow and you'll see that as we get into it the colours that I've used there I've had to layer so many different colours to get the colour saturation accurate whilst also maintaining a good contrast and one of the things as well that can happen is muddying up of the layers. Now that's where you might end up using, for instance, like a yellow ochre, a burnt sienna colour, and then you pair it with a darker colour like a black. You'll end up with like a muddy colour. You'll lose your colour saturation. And again, this is something else that I focus in the Patreon version. I show you how to layer your pencils to avoid that happening. The muddying up of the layers doesn't just happen when you're working with the pastel pencils. Here, for the background, I didn't use any pastel pencils whatsoever. I'm just using my eye makeup applicators and my soft tools. But I am layering in more of a specific way to make sure that I've got that beautiful pink and purple colour saturation shown through. As I got to the lower section of the background, this is when I started using my darker greens and I had to be really careful that they didn't mix up with my purples. At the start of the video, you saw I had two pan pastels in my hand. But for the pinks and purples here, I am using my sanded soft pastel stick method. This was always my preference before I started buying a few of the pan pastels and now it's a really good way of mixing them both together. When I'm introducing more of my pan pastels to my set, what I'll be doing is just adding a couple of colours as I go because it does work out a bit expensive to start with. So here, for instance, I didn't have any pinks and purples in a pan pastel, so I'm using my soft pastel sticks. They work really well with the pan pastels and they just blend beautifully together and where I haven't used my pastel pencils I am just using the makeup sponges or the soft tools the color and the, the sort of the softness here that I'm trying to achieve in the background is effortless I'm not having to put in any kind of detail which I would be tempted to do if I use my pastel pencils I think it's just natural because the pastel pencils do have that sharper point to it even when they're rounded off when you're working on such a large background like this we would be tempted to add too much detail which for something like this I want this background to look in the distance it needs to be fuzzy and out of focus so this technique here works really well for creating this kind of out of focus background. And if you are interested in watching this significantly slower tutorial on Patreon, the over 10 and a half hour version is available there now. I have split it up into three parts. You've got the reference photo and line art for members who do want to follow along. Every single process there on the Patreon version is included. There's no bits left out. It's got in-depth voiceover from start to finish, from the very first base layers all the way to those final details. So if this or any of my other slower tutorials in pastels or acrylics are of interest, I will link my Patreon in the description below. So this Highland Cow reference photo was actually voted the most popular in my last Patreon poll and I like to do those so that members can pick what subject is going to feature for an upcoming tutorial. And the reason why I was really looking forward to starting this one is the Highland Cow's got really difficult and complex fur texture. It's a little bit one of those areas where you think where do I start because it's got all of that thick fur that overlaps in so many different places. However, just like anything, I will always break it up into small sections and then from then I will break it up into individual layers. By doing that, there is no one part that becomes too overwhelming. It becomes a lot easier to tackle. Now, normally I would always start off with the eyes on any subject, but because the hair here on the Highland Cow does cover the eyes, I just worked from left to right. And if there are any 
you know, tips that I can give anybody tackling a fur texture like this, it would be get your base layers nice and smooth as I am here. They're really nice and well blended. I'm indicating at my highlights and my shadows. And the second would be when you start adding on the detail, just focus and look at it as abstract shapes. Don't think of this as fur. The moment we do that, we will start to put too much pressure on ourselves. We won't start following the reference photo in the same way because our brain will override what we think it should do and it will just be like, I know what fur looks like. This is how I should be drawing it. When in actual fact, we then don't follow that reference photo, as I say, as closely as we should do. Another big tip that can often work with anything challenging, it doesn't have to be fur, it could be any element. Turn your artwork upside down and turn the reference photo upside down and then work on it like that. Again, that will force your brain to see it for abstract shapes. That's something that's usually very beneficial. If you're looking at your portrait and you think that there's something quite you know, wrong, a little bit off, you're not quite sure what it is, turn everything upside down and your brain straight away should notice what that is because then it's not looking at a highland cow. It's just looking at whatever those shapes are in front of you. And going back to what I've mentioned a couple of times already here is contrast. Look at those nice highlights on the top surface of the horn and then the strong shadows underneath. This is automatically now making the Highland Cow look like it's in front of that background, which is exactly what I want. Something that I cover a lot and I have dedicated videos for on Patreon is how to avoid filling the tooth of the paper when you're working with pan pastels for your base layer. When working on a subject like this where it's got that bright colour saturation within the hair or any kind of fur like this, we would be tempted to carry on adding lots more of the pan pastel colour to our pastel matte paper or any surface that is your preference. The problem with that is there is only a limit to how much pastel that that paper can grip hold of. When you start to then add your details on top, it may feel like your pencils are gliding over the surface and that the pigment isn't able to be released from the pencil. The reason being, it doesn't have that texture anymore left on the surface. So there are a couple of things you can do there. It does limit what you can do. One of the things you can use a workable fixative, but that does run the risk of changing the colour of your artwork. You can start to try and use some softer pencils like the Caran d'Ache where they are a little bit more opaque. You might find that they're able to just grip the last remaining bit of tooth that is left. But trying to avoid filling the tooth of the paper from the very beginning is always going to be the best option. So take the area around the nose here. You can still see my white transfer lines through my pan pastel base layer. That is the best indication that's going to show you that that's the correct layer of thickness for the, pas the pan pastel base layer. If you have it any thicker than that, you do then run the risk with your additional pencil layers that you're going to get to some kind of layering point where you can't put any details on top, which for a fur texture like this, where I'm putting many, many layers down to get this level of realism, I need to be able to have that flexibility with how much tooth of the paper is left. It can be one of the very frustrating things that happens with working with pan pastels, but it doesn't have to be. And as I say, I've got so many videos on Patreon showing you how you can avoid doing that. Just be cautious with it. A big tip, when you're using your eye makeup applicators or your soft tool sponges, don't mix like left to right on the pan pastels to pick up the pigment. All I do is lightly dab two or three times in each colour and then I use a spare bit of white paper which you saw at the beginning of the video here and I use that to mix my colours on before I put it to my pastel matte paper. That's going to be one of the easiest and best ways to stop filling the tooth of the paper when using pan pastels. Now I think it's easier to fill the tooth of the paper with pan pastels because they are such a soft pigment compared to the brands of soft pastel sticks that are there. Now of course you do have softer brands of the pastel sticks but because the pan pastels come in the pan form it's easier to pick up more of that pigment at one time. That being said the softness of the pigment is what allows them to blend so beautifully so it really is worth just practice with it. Once you find how much you should have on that sponge, it becomes second nature. You don't really start to think about that side of it. And as long as you're doing what I am here, where you can see those transfer lines showing through, you know then that you've got plenty of room and scope left to add your future layers. 
So the body section here is the third part of this tutorial on Patreon and the reason why I kept this one into it, the last section is because it is a different type of fur texture. The fur on the face is significantly longer, it's thicker, it looks really dense. Whereas the fur here on the body, it's shorter, it doesn't clump together in the same way and particularly when we get to the right side here of the body, you'll see that it looks like it's more individual details. In the Patreon version, I show you why I'm holding that pencil in a specific way. If I'm holding it at the end of the barrel or right close up to the lead, there is always going to be a reason for that. So again, that's another thing that I cover in depth in that Patreon version. Because depending on where you hold that pencil, you're going to get a very different effect with the type of fur that you're trying to draw. And regardless of where I'm holding it on that pencil, I want to be working with numerous layers and numerous subtle layers. This is something that I talk about in all of my tutorials here on YouTube because it really does make such a difference, especially when you're working on something that's got as much of this soft, thicker fur effect that we're trying to create. It is very easy to have our base layer section in here with our pan pastels and then jump straight into our details. If we do that, the fur that we draw, it will not end up as realistic as it could do by adding the amount of layers that I am here. And the layering process, it doesn't have to be complex. I'm working from dark to light at the moment and I'm really just ignoring all of those details that I see on top and I'm focusing on the fur that's closest to the skin and building up from there. From the start of this Highland Cow all the way to the last section of the body here, I am really focusing on showing my Patreon members how you can layer different pencils to get one colour that you can see in that reference photo. Very rarely is there one pencil that will do that for you, so you do have to use a combination in order to get that right colour that we are going for. Now sometimes you might need a perfectly vibrant, really high saturated pencil, but it's too bright. So you need to pair it with something else to mute that down. And knowing what combination of pencils to use, again, can be one of the more stressful elements. So I really wanted to make sure that this tutorial focused on that from start to finish. So here is a photo of my finished artwork and you can really see how important it's been for me to maintain that lovely colour saturation. If I'd have ended up with my muddy layers, I just wouldn't have had the same impact that I was wanting to achieve with this piece. So I really hope the tips and techniques that I've shared here are useful. If they were, I'd really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it really does help. And if you'd like to get notified of future content, hit the subscribe and the bell button. And if you've got any art related questions, pop them in the comments below. I am more than happy to help if I can. And I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube next week. And as always, I really appreciate your support here and thank you so much for watching.